In this video, I'd like to walk you through the process for printing infrared black and white photos in Lightroom. Well, I mean, technically this could work for any black and white photo, but you know, I'm into infrared. So I started to print some of my work recently for a show that I've got coming up. And one of the challenges that I noticed was that frequently the prints didn't match what I was seeing on my screen. Uh, they were darker, the contrast didn't match, um, and I was having a hard time getting the same results. So what I'd like to do is walk you through the process that I took for fixing this, fixing my workflows so that they would match. I'm using a Canon Pixma Pro 100 with Canon paper and inks, but this could work for any other printer, and also it could work with if you're sending your prints off to a third party to be printed. Uh, this, this process will get you better results for that as well. There's a tip near the end of the video that'll help uh, set up your files for sending them to a third party. The first step is to calibrate your monitor. If you do nothing else, then this is the most important step. So you can calibrate for both Windows 10 and the Mac using software built in. You can search the web to see instructions on how to calibrate your monitor. This is really easy to do and it's a really important first step. You can get hardware calibration as well, but that'll cost extra and may not be essential. Sometimes the software calibration is good enough. Okay, so let's dive into the tutorial. Let's head over to Lightroom. Once you've calibrated your monitor, the next step is to develop the image in the develop module in Lightroom for your screen. So this is the way you would normally develop. So using all of the controls in the basic panel, the tone curve, and all of the other panels to get the image the way that you'd like it to look on screen. So that's the first step in Lightroom. The next thing you'll do is set up soft proofing, and we'll do that by either hitting the T key on your keyboard or under the view menu, select show toolbar. This will show the toolbar at the bottom, so it's the bar where you can set ratings and you have a variety of controls. On the right hand side of the bar, there's an option to decide what you can show. And if it isn't already checked, click this little arrow and then select soft proofing. And what that will do is that will provide the soft proofing checkbox that appears down on this toolbar. So to start your soft proofing, you can either hit the S key or you can click the soft proofing and that'll take us into the proof preview mode in Lightroom. Now at this point, the image may not look that different and that's okay. We're gonna make some changes in Lightroom that will account for that. So first thing that I wanna do is show more of the border. The images that I'm printing will have a white mat and I wanna replicate the look of that on screen. So I'll go over to the navigator and adjust the settings. For a landscape image, this could be one to three ratio or one to four. For a portrait image, you may need to go to about one to eight. So just show some of the border. Once you've added the border, that will help acclimate your eyes to the way that the image will look uh, with a mat. The next thing you want to do is set the border of your mat. Right click in the border area and select the mat color. In my case, I'm going to have a white mat, so I'll select paper white. If you have a different colored mat, you could select a different option from this menu. The next thing you'll need to do is set a profile over here on the right hand side. This is an option that appears when you're in the soft proofing mode. So typically this will be set to RGB when you start and you can see that there's a bit of a difference. I want to match the printer and the paper that I'm using. So if you don't see that listed, you can go to other and then select the profile that's usually installed with your printer. So in my case, I'm using the Canon Pro 100 and I'm using luster paper. So I'm going to select that option. Okay. You can see when you've selected this profile that the image will change. In my case, it darkened a bit. This is because Lightroom is now replicating what the look of the image will be with this particular printer and this particular paper. So now that I've done this, I want to save a virtual copy of this image that'll contain the settings specific to my printing. So it won't affect the image if I'm going to use online. So what I wanna do is click on create proof copy, and this will create a virtual copy of the image, but that is specifically designed for this profile and is specifically designed for printing. So now any changes that I make in the develop module will be associated with this virtual copy with this proof copy instead of with the original and that's good because I'm going to be making changes that will be different so the first thing that I want to do is match the aspect ratio so let's say that I am going to print this as an 8 by 10 if so I want to change my aspect ratio which I can do by hitting the R key or hitting the crop overlay and this will take me into the crop mode where I can then look at the aspect ratio so if I'm going to print this as an 8 by 10 I'll 
I'll want to select 8x10 from this list, that's going to adjust uh, the crop of the image and I may want to make changes, make adjustments to this before I print it. So there I've adjusted my crop. I can now see what those changes look like. The next thing that I want to do is I want to go into the basic panel and make changes to the tone and the presence to adjust the image now that the profile has been applied. So this might mean that I want to maybe increase the exposure slightly or it could mean that I want to adjust the contrast. One of the things that I like to do once I'm in this profile is look at the tone curve. So in the tone curve, you can put points on the tone curve. You can select a different option like a medium contrast or a strong contrast. You may find that you need more contrast now that you have the, the print option displayed. So in this case, let's select the medium contrast. The other thing that you can do is you can use the point control, this picker, to pick a spot on the image that you want to make an adjustment to, and that will add a control point. So if you see me, I'm moving my mouse around the screen, and there's a gray control point that's appearing on the line that's representing where a control point would be placed. If I wanted to make an adjustment to the clouds, to make the clouds a little bit brighter, you can see that's gonna appear on the upper right hand control. If I click and drag up slightly, that's gonna brighten the clouds. So I've increased the, the exposure specifically there. If I want to make an adjustment to the face of the half dome here, I can click and drag down. Now these adjustments are going to be very, you have to be subtle because you can, you can see that the line moves very abruptly to your movement. So you may want to make some of these changes very slight. But this can, this can make a dramatic improvement to the look of a printed image. So definitely take a look at the tone curve, make adjustments, use the point option to get the image the way that you'd like it to look once you've printed it. Once I've completed all of the changes in the develop module to enhance this the, the look of the image with the new profile applied now i can head over to the print module so i'm going to select the print module in lightroom let's walk through some of the settings that you will see here in the print module so first up in let's go to uh, layout style you're going to select in this case single image i want to print a single image so that's selected in image settings i usually don't use these although i do select rotate to fit um, i'm, I'm going to leave my paper loading in a portrait mode as opposed to landscape so i just rotate the image to match that that's why my image is rotated 90 degrees and then i don't have to worry about constantly changing my paper so i'm just going to leave rotate to fit on this is useful if you're printing multiple images if you're if you're feeding one sheet at a time into your printer then you don't need this option Next in the layout section, I want to ensure that all of my margins are set to zero because I'm not going to be adding any margins here. In this case, I'm printing an 8x10, but I'm printing it on letter size paper, which is 8.5 by 11 inches. So there's going to be a border here, which is fine. That's I'm, I'm going to use a mat with this image anyway, so the, the margin doesn't matter. I want to set that to zero, and I want to set my page grid to one by one since I'm only printing a single image here, not multiple images on this page, and the cell size. This is really important. You want the cell size to match the size that you're printing of the image. And in this case, this is going to be an 8 by 10 so I want the height to be 10, the width to be 8. I want my cell size to match the size that I'm printing. And if you were printing edge to edge, then it would be really important that the cell size match the size of your paper. In the guides section, I'm not going to have anything checked. I don't want to show anything in the printout, so there's no guides. In the page section, same thing. I'm not using any of these options. I don't want to change the color. There's no point. It's already white. The I don't need an identity plate or watermarking or anything, so I'm not going to make any changes to the page section. Now down in the print job section, I want to print to printer. You could print to JPEG if you were planning to send this off to a third party printer, but because I'll be using my own printer. If you don't have a printer, but you're, you're planning to send your image off to a third party printer, you could still load the print profile from that third party printer into Lightroom and use this same process to re-edit your image so that you'll get a, a look that more closely represents what will be printed by that third party printer when you get to this point, in, instead of printer, you can select JPEG, and then you'll be sending that printer a JPEG file, which more closely represents the look you want with their profile. That's a great option if you don't have a printer, but want to validate that the look is going to be right. It's so hard to get the look of a printer to match what's on your screen. Using this process with a third party can be really helpful. So printer for yourself and a 
JPEG if you're sending it off to a third party. Elsewhere in here, I'm not gonna use draft mode. I'm not gonna change the print resolution. I'm gonna have print sharpening remain standard. The media type, there's only two options here, matte and glossy. I'm using a luster, which is kind of halfway between the two, so I'll select glossy. And then in color management, I want to ensure that I'm using the same profile that I selected under the soft proof in the develop module so that I'm getting the same look. In my case, that'll be the Canon Pro 100 with the luster paper. So I have that selected here and I'm not going to make any changes to brightness. So that's everything in the print panel. Now, before we print, I want to look at some of the settings within the printer. So let's go down to this button here at the bottom of the screen and select printer. This will open up the print dial dialog and from here I want to select properties. Now some changes that we want to make uh, in the properties. First of all this is the quick setup so this tab has all the settings you'll really need. If you want to dive into more detail you can use these other tabs but pretty much everything you need is here. I want to use photo printing because I'm printing a photo. Uh, I'm not printing standard so I'm not printing you know say a document. So I'm going to select photo printing over on the right I'm going to select preview before printing. I uh, will show you what that does after I hit the print option. It'll, we'll see a preview before we print. Down in additional features, you'll want to ensure you have borderless printing. If you are printing edge to edge on your paper, I'm not in this case, but if you are, make sure you select borderless printing. I usually just leave this on regardless. That'll allow me to get those margins to zero back in the, in the layout panel. Because I'm printing black and white in this case, I want to select the black and white photo print option. What this does is it sets the printer to only use black and white inks, uh, which is really nice with this printer because there are a number of ink cartridges that are specifically designed for black and white. So I can leverage those and it won't use any of the color inks, which could lead to a color cast being presented in your black and white image. And I don't want to use any of the color inks either. So make sure you select black and white photo adjustment. You can also make sure that you have the right settings here. So I want to go under media type and make sure that I have the right paper. So I'm going to select my paper, which is the Canon Photo Paper Pro Luster, whatever paper you're using, select that here make sure that you have the right print size uh, selected. So in this case, the paper size is going to be letter. So I'm going to select letter, even though my print is an eight by 10, my paper size is still letter. Print quality is standard. There's a high option that uses more ink, but I'm not sure it produces dramatically better quality. So I'm not going to select that. And that's it for my settings. So you could, again, you could deep dive into some of these other options to see more specific uh, detailed options, but everything that I use is pretty much covered in the quick setup. So I'll hit OK and then hit OK. And that simply made those changes. Now I can hit print and then this will begin the process of printing my image. As I mentioned, that one option we had in the printer preferences section to select a preview, that's what is now appearing here. And what's really nice about this is that you can get one last confirmation before it actually the job gets sent to the printer because ink is expensive, paper is expensive, and you want to validate that you've got the right settings. And so you can come in here to the preview program. You can validate that the paper size is correct. You can validate that you have the right paper type, that your media type is here, that it's coming from the right tray and your settings are correct. I can see that the image is the way I've intended with it's an eight by 10 on a letter size paper. This is a mistake that I commonly make is I forget to set the right aspect ratio of my images. So I, I forget to change it from maybe its original aspect ratio to an eight by 10, which is very different. This would be a good place for me to notice that if these borders were wider, then that might be a clue to be that I had the wrong aspect ratio. So the, the print preview is a great opportunity to validate what you're printing before you send it to the printer. And when then you're ready, hit start printing. So that's my process for printing infrared black and white photos in Lightroom. Do you have any suggestions for improving this process or any questions about the process? Be sure to add them to the comments below. Thanks.